I've started my deuterium depleted water experiment. I am on day two now. Uh, yesterday, I started to drink my Clarivia deuterium depleted water, which is 25 parts per million. Uh, it's not as good as Preventa, which is another company that makes it. So I will be getting some Preventa deuterium depleted water, which is the one that's used in these clinical trials. Uh, so if it's the one used in the clinical trials and it's a better quality of water, it makes more sense that I use that. But because I'm impatient, I thought about um, just starting with the water that I have already. Could I say if I've noticed any benefits so far? No. <laughs> it tastes just like ordinary water. Um, but what I've been doing is starting with a protocol that uh, you, you, whereby you alter the concentration of the water so you don't start with the lowest you can get which is what I have 25 parts per million I think you can actually get a bit lower but um, yeah 25 parts per million is pretty low and you want to gradually deplete your body's deuterium levels so I have um, changed the composition of this by adding, by using 50% and adding 50% of ordinary water. Well, I say ordinary water, but mine is from a glass bottle and it's a good quality water. Um, so I do that in a jug. I'll try and put a video of that somewhere on here, somehow. <laughs> My video editing skills are not great. So, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and it's a 50-50 yeah, formula. So normal water is around 150 parts per million deuterium, and this is 25 parts per million. So I guess if you add it together, 50-50 it's around 88 parts per million, if I'm correct, <laughs> around eight, approximately 88. So when you start, usually you'd have 88 to 100, I guess, parts per million, usually about 100 parts per million. Yeah, from what I've seen in the clinical trials. Uh, 88 to 100 parts per million deuterium depleted water for a while and then you go down and gradually deplete as the weeks go on having it every day and so I will be doing this for a couple of months probably just until the water runs out and my mother's doing it with me because her cancer has actually come back she had, uh, she was diagnosed after my diagnosis just over five years ago uh, with esophageal cancer caused by, we found out the cause, it was caused by her uh, medication for osteoporosis, alindronic acid. And in some people, um, that can go on to cause esophageal cancer. There's actually quite large scale studies that have been done on this and we contacted researchers about that. And eventually we found out that that was the cause for her. Um, it was quite a shock. She had treatment and changed her diet and um, then didn't have any disease showing anymore. Up until very recently when she had a tumour in the colon um, that she's recently had removed and it's it's spread to other areas so she has disease in a number of areas uh, so we're using a deuterium depletion protocol for that um, so yeah um, the protocol includes the deuterium depleted water from Preventa, 
um, he includes a nutrient dense, low deuterium ketogenic diet, um, breathing therapy, natural light therapy. Uh, we have a device called a Juve coming either tomorrow or the day after, um, and that's a it's a, a red light therapy. Um, it's very good actually. It's um, it's not just like these red lights you get. It's um, a specific. It's a a specific. What would you call it? A spectrum of light that's used. That's very therapeutic, and could benefit cancer patients quite a lot if you have active disease, or if you don't, even just for prevention. Potentially, has huge potential. Uh, she will also be adopting. Well, she's already been doing these things, now, um, but just started. Body temperature cycling, so going out in the sun as much as possible, grounding, um, cold showers, that kind of thing. Uh, also environmental mitigation, so uh, she's got getting a she's got a dehumidifier in her room, um, and yeah, I said with the grounding. And all these lovely things connecting with nature is very important. And avoiding artificial environments as much as possible. It's funny that humans are the only mammals stupid enough, in a way, to <laughs> create all these, uh, live in these artificial environments. And it's affecting our health, our health negatively. It's affecting our health negatively. Um, she's also um supplementing with agents which will have a positive effect on her mitochondria and energy production um capsaicin and oxaloacetate oxaloacetate is an intermediate in the citric acid cycle tca cycle so that will help to that will help the whole uh, energy production thing yeah, so deuterium depleted water helps that too, because um, high deuterium kind of ages you, and uh, deuterium depleted water can be like an age deceleration treatment. Um, so it has many has many benefits. Um, as she's doing this, because she has active disease and is not having chemotherapy, she's chosen not to have it. Um, We'll be monitoring monitoring her cancer markers um, regularly and seeing how she does. So this will be very interesting. And if she does have any kind of response, because it's quite advanced disease that's spread, um, people have to sit up and take notice of this. So I'll let you know how my deuterium depleted water experiment goes. And I will let you know how my mum does with her deuterium depletion protocol with all these other metabolic approaches that she's applying instead of the standard of care. Because it would be ineffective and because for her and because, because of the poor prognosis this was an informed decision, and this is what we've chosen to do. And, uh, yeah. Fingers crossed it goes well. And um, I'm cautiously optimistic about it.